Hello and welcome back and today I want to give you five reasons why you should consider buying the older generation of Synology NAS. Let's face it when it comes to buying your first NAS a lot of you don't want to buy the latest thing. A lot of the time that you look at the available NASs on the market today and you think, do you know what, why should I buy the latest thing when I might be able to grab a bargain for the older generation? Maybe the older generation is going to be better suited to my environment. So, as much as I talk about brand new NAS on this channel all the time, today I want to focus on the older gen and give you five reasons why you should go for it. So, reason number one, I've already touched on it, the price. The older generation will almost always be available at a better price, be it because the older generation's been around for a few years and the shine has kind of gone off that price tag, or that as soon as the newer generation arrives, the older generation has to have its price kicked down a little bit to clear out the old portfolio. One way or another, retailers will generally lower the price of the previous generation as soon as the new gen comes along, and Synology NAS is no exception. Therefore, when you do look at buying a brand new NAS, never be afraid to look at the previous generation, like the DS918 Plus and the DS1019, because all too often, you will find that these devices that are incredibly similar to the new releases for 2020 are available at quite a decent little chunk of change less, and that may be money that you can plough into storage media like hard drives and SSD. Reason number two is to do with the memory. The older generation of Synology, and specifically these two more than any other, give you a lot more scope for your memory upgrades. The newer generation of Synology 2020 series NAS arrives with 4 gig of memory already soldered on the board. And that goes for the two bays as well, where it's 2 gig. Ultimately, it means that you've only got one available slot for upgrading. And although the official maximum for the CPU on those NAS is 8 gig, we have experimented and taken it a bit further than that. Now, the older generation arrived with two sodium slots inside. You do it at your own risk by exceeding the official memory maximum. And again, it is a bit dodgy. It may invalidate your warranty, but be, please bear that in mind. But nevertheless, the older generation series of devices gave you a lot more scope for upgrading. The older generation, for example, allowed you to install unofficially uh, your own risk, blah, 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 terms and conditions, etc., uh, you could install two 8 gig Crucial or Kingston memory modules inside and have a 16 gig Synology with two paired memory modules of the same speed and capacity. Whereas the newer generation only has that one slot available. So although you can install a 16 gig stick of DDR4 at high frequency, it's going to be paired with 4 gig that have been soldered to the board. And often people don't like to mix memory modules, they don't like to mix different speeds and frequencies and that often can be problematic. And this is something that's completely avoided on the older generation. Reason number three is simply the body of community work online for the older generation. If ever you're trying to find a hot fix for something, or you need a hand or a guide to certain programs, or you're gonna run a third party setup and you're wondering if it's gonna work on a certain architecture, you're gonna find a lot more information online on the older generation than you can or you will on the newer gen. The new gen, hasn't been around long enough to be bench tested with different archival setups. It hasn't been tested with enough software and third party hardware. Compatibility lists are generally a little thinner on the ground. And although the architecture of most Synology NAS is incredibly similar, you can only go so far before you start hitting barriers like memory and CPU compatibility lists. So again, more about software than hardware, but the older generation just has more reference points and more archival information online from other users to help you get the perfect setup for you. And it's very hard to ignore that body of community links and back and forth between people solving problems on their hardware to ignore and just think, oh, the older generation just doesn't give you enough for your money, because it really does. Reason number four, low power. Although both of these devices do utilize technically less efficient hardware than the newer generation, utilizing that J4000 series CPU compared to the J3000 and DDR4 versus DDR3L, it has to be said that if you're not going to be pushing these devices to the very max, these devices will use less power, typically, in the majority of their transactions. Those CPUs have already got a lower frequency overall, a 1.5 going up to 2.3, whereas the new gen goes 2.0 to 2.7 gigahertz. But on top of that, the device itself is just um, the, the Synology DSM platform has a system of intelligent caching in the background which will utilize more memory than it typically needs to produce a much more slick, smoother experience. But by doing that and everything working a bit harder, it is going to use a little bit more power. And although this won't make a vast amount of difference hour by hour or day by day, week by week and month by month, it may make all the difference. And if you live on 
a houseboat, have a metered connection, or have intermittent power failures in your region and you use a UPS, those small differences may make all the difference if you're running a device off of a metered or battery powered connection long term. Reason number five, and this one's a little bit more nebulous, it's more about Synology as a brand themselves and the amount of R&D they've done to this kind of architecture. Now, does anyone else remember when I would keep talking about Synology NASes and the fact they've got an Intel Atom CPU and half the people would go in the comments below and go, I cannot believe we're still using the Atom, and I completely understand. I personally am not a huge fan of Intel Atoms, but it has to be said that um, be it the older or new generation Atoms, Synology have done a lot of work with that CPU, and they have really wrung every single drip out of that processor they possibly can, and therefore the architecture of their software running on that hardware could not be better. The same goes for the J3000 series of CPUs. Synology have spent so much time tweaking and improving and updating their applications using that architecture that you can't just ignore all of that work. A lot of their programs have only just started running on the J4000 architecture of Celerons, and I don't think they would have got as much work done on it yet. They can borrow some of the research and moving it from CPU revision to CPU revision, but there's still no avoiding uh, that the three years that DSM has been developed for those platforms, that it hasn't been absolutely mined as much as it can. And that's another reason why the older generation may give you more for your money. But this has been five reasons to buy the older generation. Personally, I quite like the newer generation. I think particularly a few of them, that 1520, for example, is definitely worth your attention. But I know that's just me and often a number of you with you know, meter data connections, those that are newer to NAS, those of you that are watching the pennies, the older generation does have its appeal, so do let me know. But otherwise, whichever one you go for, bang it in the comments, click like if you want to learn more, click subscribe to learn more, and uh, to learn more about the channel, of course. And of course, visit me at NAS Compares via the link in the description. I will see you next time.